Number 5. This over life size fragment may have been part of a seated statue of the emperor made during the reign of his stepson and successor, Tiberius. Over 250 portraits of Augustus, including numerous full length statues, are known today. In antiquity, there were probably as many bronze statues of the emperor as there were marble ones, but relatively few of the former have survived. Augustus himself claimed to have removed 80 silver statues that had been set up in his honor in the city of Rome alone. Although Augustus' features are individualized, he is represented in an idealized, ageless way. When he died in AD 14, he was 77 years old, but no portraits of him in old age are known. Number 4. Caracalla took the official name of M. Aurelius Antoninus Pius as part of the Severan dynasty's attempt to appear as the legitimate and worthy successors of the second century Antonine emperors. Despite this, in his official portraiture, he abandoned the luxuriant hair and beard of his predecessors for a military style characterized by closely cropped curls and a stubble beard. An ancient source records that on his deathbed, his father Septimius Severus advised Caracalla to enrich the soldiers and despise everyone else. This finely carved head is a powerful rendering of the official portrait and was probably produced at an imperial workshop since the statue fragments are said to have been found in Rome. It is from a statue, the legs of which also survive and are displayed in the study collection on the mezzanine floor. Number 3. The portrait style created for Augustus was adopted by his family and immediate successors in order to stress the unity and continuity of the Julio-Claudian dynasty. This fine bust of Caligula AD 3741, has regular features and carefully designed locks of hair similar to those in portraits of Augustus. Here, however, the artist has also conveyed something of Caligula's vanity and cruelty in the proud turn of the head and the thin, pursed lips. Number 2. Constantine the Great was the first Christian emperor of Rome and his reign had a profound effect on the subsequent development of the Roman, later Byzantine, world. By 325, he had succeeded in reunifying the empire, having defeated the last of his former Tetrarchic colleagues, the Eastern Emperor Licinius. He thereafter aimed to establish a new dynasty and to found a new capital named Constantinople after himself. Christianity played an important role not only in Constantine's personal life and success, but also in the program of reform and renewal that he had planned for the Roman Empire. Although the court and administration no longer resided at Rome, Constantine was careful not to neglect the old imperial city and adorned it with many new secular and Christian buildings. The most famous of these is the Triumphal Arch, the Arch of Constantine, which still stands near the Colosseum. Similarly, the fragments of a colossal statue that now adorn the courtyard of the Museo del Palazzo dei Conservatori in Rome probably once stood in imposing grandeur in the main hall of the Basilica of Maxentius, a building that was completed by Constantine. Number 1. The bronze head was discovered on August 11, 1904 near the Arch of Augustus at Susa, a town in northern Italy, not far from Turin, together with some small fragments of one or more bronze statues and a fragment of a marble inscription belonging to an honorific statue. The statue had been donated for Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa, 6312 before Christ, one of Octavian's, later Augustus, closest friends and supporters by a member of the Cadii family, but nothing suggests that the bronze head and the inscription belong together. Traditionally, the head has been identified as Agrippa, although it cannot be related to Agrippa's normal portrait type. Nevertheless, the head clearly belonged to an impressive, full-length statue of a high-ranking Roman.